Hi, my name is Ronald Wharton. I am a full-time cardiologist at North Shore University Hospital in Manhasset, where I direct the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy program. Many, many patients are referred to me for this condition, and yet almost 100% of them truly have no understanding of what is wrong with them when they come to me. It's never been explained to them. They have a lot of symptoms, but no one has told them why they're happening. And if you don't know why they're happening, you can't possibly understand how we're going to go about treating it. I'm gonna show you by showing you some echocardiograms and you may think, I've never read an echocardiogram before, but don't worry, you can handle this because I'm gonna walk you through it. This is a representative image of a normal heart. So in this normal heart, let me explain to you what's going on. The left side of the heart receives blood from the lungs after the blood has gotten oxygenated. It first comes into the chamber in the lower part of the screen. That's the left atrium. When the heart is relaxing, the left atrium is nothing more than a passive conduit for blood to get into the left ventricle, which is the chamber on the top of the screen. And it goes through the mitral valve. The mitral valve has two leaflets, which you can see opening and closing. And valves are responsible for making sure that blood flows in one direction as it traverses from chamber to chamber. When the heart squeezes, the mitral valve is gonna close, and a second valve, the aortic valve, which in this image is at about four o'clock, is gonna open. So the normal trajectory of blood flow is like an upside down letter V, okay? This is a normal heart. What happens in obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy? Well, something slightly different. This is another patient who has this very condition. And again, you see the same chambers, the left atrium on the bottom, the left ventricle on the top, the mitral valve in between the left atrium and the left ventricle, the aortic valve at about four o'clock. But this is slightly different. Do you notice that when the heart is squeezing, the mitral valve is bending over backwards and it's hitting the muscle, which is on the right of the screen, in between the left ventricle and the right ventricle. In doing so, it can obstruct the flow of blood from the heart into the aorta. In this next slide here, I'm showing you what this looks like with color. And what you can see here is this mosaic of color when the heart squeezes at again around three to four o'clock in the image. That mosaic of color is turbulent or high velocity blood flow that occurs when one valve is getting in the way of the other and obstructing the flow. When a certain amount of flow has to go through a much smaller area, it has no choice to go faster. That creates the murmur that you may have been told that you have. So why do these changes happen? Well, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is a genetic condition, even though we only identify a gene in approximately a third of patients. But it can manifest in anyone. I have patients in their 30s. I have patients in their 90s. It has a very, very large array of presentations, if you will, of all ages. But what happens in common in all of them is that there are two things that have changed the hypertrophic or the thickening of the heart muscle, plus the mitral valve being too long or having too much slack in it, creates a change in the flow pattern such that the mitral valve bends over backwards as I showed you in the image, and I'll show you again, right here in this image on the echocardiogram, mitral valve bends over backwards, hits the muscle, and in doing so, obstructs the flow of blood. Imagine you're a blood cell and you're in the left ventricle, which again is that chamber on the top of the screen. When the heart squeezes, that flow is supposed to go towards the aortic valve, which is about four o'clock. The mitral valve bending over backwards and slamming into the septum, which is that muscle, obstructs the blood flow. That's why patients have symptoms. Now, what are those symptoms? Number one, patients get dizzy. Less blood is getting through the aortic valve and into the aorta and therefore into the body. Therefore, the blood pressure can go down and patients can get lightheaded or dizzy. The second thing is that because the pressure in the left ventricle goes up, because more blood is trapped in the left ventricle because of that obstruction, patients become short of breath. And these symptoms are what we call moving targets because depending on how hard your heart squeezes, these symptoms may get worse. So you may be perfectly fine if you're sitting and relaxing, but if you try to run for a bus or walk up a hill or walk upstairs or you're carrying groceries, anything that makes the heart squeeze harder is gonna make these symptoms worse. The other thing that can make these symptoms worse is if the heart gets smaller. How do you make the heart smaller? You stand up too fast because blood pools in the legs. Or you bend down, same thing, you decrease the return of blood from the veins in the legs up into the heart. Sometimes eating does that. Eating increases the work of the heart because it has to send more blood to the intestines. And when the heart works harder, this obstruction of flow gets worse. 
So the manifestations are lightheadedness, sometimes even people can pass out if they get up too quickly, and shortness of breath, all of which are worsened by anything that causes the heart to squeeze harder or get smaller. Thank you for watching. I hope you now understand more about the symptoms and manifestations of cardiomyopathy.